Hello, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to today's session. Um, thank you for joining in. Um, today, um, we've been, um, we'll continue from where we left off, but before that, we will pray. Um, yeah, let's pray and continue. Father, we thank you for, for this session. Father, we pray for your plans and purposes to be made, um, Lord, possible in our lives, Lord. Thank you that you're the God who leads us from impossibilities into possibilities. Yes, Master, we thank you that with you all things are possible. Lord, every hindrance, every um, Lord stronghold, yes, Lord, we thank you that they come down in your matchless name. We thank you for leading us, Lord, into freedom progressively, Lord, even as you pursue you who is truth itself, Lord. And so we commit ourselves, we submit ourselves into your mighty hands. We commit this session into your mighty hands, we pray, Lord, even as we look into the truth of your word, I pray that your truth will set us free to be who we need to be, God, to be who you've called us to be, Lord. Yes, Father God, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, let me just share the notes and then we'll continue with where we left off. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, yeah, so last session, yeah, I think the notes are just coming up. So last session, we, um, you know, we've been, we've been looking at prosperity. We've been studying the whole um, topic of prosperity. And uh, just to reiterate, cause us to remember, you know, we've been seeing that uh, prosperity is something which includes God. You know, prosperity is something that comes from him. Um, so when we, when we looked at the definition of the word prosperity itself, we, we looked at it this way. We saw that it is um, divinely uh, in, enabled, right? Divinely enabled success or growth or increase um, by divinely appointed means for divinely appointed purposes so which means that it's it's divinely in, you know appointed divinely inspired right from the beginning till the end right right through initiated by god um, as we willingly submit to him so so we see that you know god is uh, in this you know god god is part and parcel of this uh, this uh, you know, aspect of you know what do you what, what we would this this whole thing of prosperity. God is part of it. Right? It's not something which is apart from God that we're talking about. God is very much our God is very much part of it. It's initiated by Him. It is inspired by Him. It brings to you know He brings it to uh, fruitfulness um, by His means and methods. So, so from God's side. We've been seeing that uh, you know he is for this, like he's not against this. He is for this. He um, he does not want to withhold anything, any good from us. And we've been studying the nature of God, the character of God, and we're seeing that it is God's heart to prosper His people, it, and it gives Him great pleasure to see the prosperity of His servants and so on. So, and in fact, one of the covenant names of God is that is this that um, He is. Uh, Jehovah Jireh is Yahweh Ireh, which means he's a provider, like right? the God who provides, the one who provides. So, so this is God's heart. So we've been, you know, we've been, we need to be strong in this. Or we need to be rooted in this. And, um, and we've seen that God is who he said he is, right? So God is for this. Um, so if God is for prosperity in a person's life and again just want to say that prosperity is not just finances but it includes everything else right it uh, it means you're thriving it means you're flourishing it means you're growing it means that you know you are successful so if god is for prosperity in a person's life and if his heart is to bring that into a person's life then what is stopping me what is stopping us right so last uh, class we looked at uh, some of the hindrances some of the things that come as barriers between us and god when it comes to prosperity so one of the first things that we looked at was wrong motivation right if there's wrong motivation if my motive if my reason for prosperity you know for me desiring prosperity it is it is wrong motive then 
that becomes a hindrance. Uh, we looked at James chapter four, which talks about, um, you know, if there is lusting, if there is greed, if there is covetousness and, and all that, you know, you, you do not have, you, if all this is there in your life. And, um, and, and in despite all this, if you go ahead and ask further, you, know, you don't receive it because you're asking amiss, which means that there is a wrong motive. Why? What is this asking amiss that you might spend it on your pleasures, that it's, it's only for your selfish use? Right now, we know that God is not against us enjoying wealth. Right, we see First Timothy six. Just going back to that verse again. First Timothy six and verse seventeen talks about how uh, God is the one who richly gives us all things to enjoy. Which means that well, God is not against that. But if it is only going to be uh, on my selfish desires, it's if it's going to be I me myself, right? Then um, God has a bigger plan. God has a bigger purpose for finances to come into our lives that we might be a blessing. So it becomes, again, because of this wrong motive, it becomes a hindrance. So wrong motive becomes a hindrance and stops the flow of provision uh, or whatever God wants to bring into our lives. And we looked at the gospel also where the Lord Jesus teaches and, and says, you know, of the rich man, um, well, the rich man has a good plan. He says, you know, he, he, he's actually providing for uh, better places for storage when there's, um, you know, when there's more harvest. And uh, so there's nothing wrong in that. But this is what he says the rich, when he comes to a conclusion that, um, you know, you have, uh, he says in um, verse 19, right? Luke 12, verse 19, he says, um, you have laid up goods for many years, take ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Okay, so God is again not in the picture at all. So, so here, so there's nothing wrong with the strategy. There's nothing wrong, but the fact is that God is not in the picture, and God says, you know, this night you will be uh, required that your soul will be required. Then, whatever you've laid up, whose treasures will it be? Whatever you've provided for yourself, and uh, and then verse twenty-one. So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Okay, so uh, so that's uh, one of the things that we saw. The first thing that we saw that wrong motivation. The second thing we saw was wrong method. God is a God who is holy. He is a righteous one. He leads us in paths of righteousness. Psalm 23 talks about that. And we looked at Psalm 5. Just he does not take pleasure. He's not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness. And he's a God who will bless the righteous. So which means that this unrighteousness is not part of him. It's not part of his nature. Uh, it is his nature to bless, but righteousness is not part of him. So the end does not justify the means that I take up. Right. Uh, so if I'm if the if, if the end is yeah I, I need increase I need success and I need growth, but it it also matters what is the method. So a divinely inspired or divinely appointed method will not be an unrighteousness, unrighteous method, will not be one that is contrary to the nature of God, it will be contrary to the character of God, that innate um, uh, ability or uh, innate value of God. It is contrary to that. It is opposite of that. Therefore, it is not from God. It's not something that God will put his a seal of approval on. This is not something that God approves. It's not of him. So he cannot bless. Right? If something is not of him, it's contrary to what who he is, then he will not bless that. So that also, if it's a wrong method, <clears throat> if it's a method which has its source in wickedness, uh, which, which has its source in unrighteousness, then there is something that God cannot approve of. He cannot bless. Okay. So today, let's look at uh, what are some of the other hindrances that we could be knowingly or unknowingly harboring in our lives, okay? And it would that we get rid of these so that there's nothing standing in between us and God, and uh, we need to be mindful of this, right? So uh, today, we're going to look at a few other things, a few other hindrances that uh, we'll do well to, you know, remove uh, out of our lives. Okay, so today, we see that... Um, the first one is, or, or the third one really, is being disobedient in finances or being unfaithful in finances. Like God's instructions, you know, God's um, uh, commands 
always lead to life however you know difficult they might be however uncomfortable they might be god's intent in instructing us or is intent in commanding us is to lead us to a place of freedom um you know because uh, he is truth itself and truth that liber- liberates that unlocks and releases us to freedom right so his intent in instructing us is uh, is always for our good and not for our destruction uh, right jeremiah um we read about how the thoughts of god the plans of god are to prosper us and never for calamity or never to harm us right very his very thoughts his plans so uh, when we are disobedient to his instructions so he gives an instruction say okay this is my instruction and the end result of the instruction is life the end result of this instruction is success the end result the objective of this instruction is give you you know fruitfulness so if we are disobedient to that through those steps that he's guiding us then we cannot expect fruitfulness we cannot expect success right and, and even if you know we 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 do uh, employ such methods and we are disobedient uh, to his leading then you know uh, maybe something is short lived whatever we receive is short lived right um luke chapter 16 and verse 10 the lord jesus says he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much so so this whole thing of being faithful is irrespective of whether that what he was asked us to do is you know big in terms of our you know rating our scale if it's big significant or if it's something which is small so right in god's eyes it's the same thing you know so if we are faithful in the small things and we will be faithful in the bigger things but if we are faithful unfaithful in the small things then we cannot hope to be faithful in the bigger things so god requires us to be faithful god requires us to be obedient and that leads to uh, increase right so if we are disobedient then we can expect the opposite of increase which is um you know decrease or which is unfruitfulness right so disobedience when it comes to finances is a is something that hinder, hinders um, the prosperity that god god has for us and also we see in malachi chapter 3 if we go to um, malachi and chapter 3 and verse 9 it talks about um god has some uh, pretty strong words for those who have not followed his instruction with regard to tithing right with regard to the first fruit of the increase so this is what he says you know you are cursed with a curse this is malachi 3 and verse 9 you are cursed with a curse for you have robbed me even this whole nation bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and try me now in this says the lord of hosts if i will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it okay that's verse 10 so so you see the intent of god's instruction it is not to destroy the person is it is not to bring dis, you know place the person in a disadvantageous position uh, it is to bring that person uh, increase okay so god is saying you know try me now on this now this is a principle that i've laid down that you know this 10 uh, this tights um you know we're going to look at it in detail in one of our uh, other sessions about tights and givings and arms and so on so we see that this is this is god's principle this is god's instruction right so uh, unfaithfulness in that uh, results in the opposite of that Okay. the other thing that we see here is that the bible talks about in the same scripture in the same verse uh, god talks about uh, an adversary right he talks about an enemy so here he says um you know i will rebuke the devourer for your sakes so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the fields says the lord of hosts now now this is a reality now there is a devourer 
Right? We're talking about Satan, the powers of darkness, the fallen angels. There is a devourer, there is an adversary, and you know the entire uh, powers of darkness. Um, now, what do they do? They bring about, they steal, they kill, destroy, they bring about destruction in the lives of you know God's people and others. Now, that's the reality, right? The enemy is real, the adversary is real. But God says that he will rebuke the devourer. But I just want us to focus on what the devourer does. You know, the devourer destroys the fruit of your ground. The devourer um, you know, ensures that the vine fails to bear fruit. Right? So it's talking about agriculture. It's talking about agricultural produce. That the devourer is interfering in. The devourer is stepping in and making sure that there is, um, you know, the the all the efforts that you have put in uh, does not yield. Okay, and the Lord says that He will rebu rebuke the devourer. Okay, that's the that's the best part. But the fact is that there is opposition. There is the enemy who who is waiting to bring in uh, destruction. Okay, so we know that at the cross, the Lord Jesus won the victory over the enemy. He's disarmed the enemy. Um, and, uh, you know, on the cross, uh, what he did on the cross, he made a public spectacle of all the powers of darkness. They have been disarmed. And he has taken us from the clutches of the enemy into the kingdom of life. Now, into the kingdom of light. Now, that's the reality. Now, Satan does not have any jurisdiction. But... We can always open the doors, you know, maybe out of ignorance, maybe maybe knowingly, right? Uh, we we tend to open the doors. Maybe living in rebellion, living in intentional sin, having a you know sinful lifestyle, we open the doors for the enemy to walk in. And and when the enemy walks in, the enemy walks in with an intent to steal, kill, and destroy, right? So. That is a hindrance. The enemy's works becomes a hindrance. It's not God who's holding back, but it's the enemy. And we have un unwittingly allowed the enemy to step in and uh, do the work of destroying and so on in our lives. So, so what is the thing? We need to step up. We need to raise up, uh, or rise up in faith and resist the enemy. The promise that God gives in, we see this in the book of James chapter 4, is that that when we submit to him, when we submit to God, which means uh, in the act of submission, uh, obedience is there, right? When we follow, when we submit to God, then when we resist the enemy, then he will flee from us. So he will flee from you. Um, James chapter 4 and verse 7, therefore submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you so this is what we are called to do to rise up and to submit to god and to resist the enemy so this is our responsibility right to overcome this hindrance to make sure that this hindrance is not there in our lives right the other thing that we see is wisdom or the lack of wisdom okay if you uh, look at Proverbs 24, um, verses 3 to 6, you know, that's there on the screen. Let's look at verses 3 and 4 first, right? It says, though, sorry, through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant, which is, so it's talking about the role of wisdom. You know, we know wisdom comes from god wisdom comes through experience we know there's wisdom in the council of people right all these are sources of wisdom uh, which is good right so here the bible talks about uh, the writer of proverbs is mentioning that wisdom through wisdom a house is built which means that something that is not there earlier comes into existence through wisdom right and when that something comes into existence, it's made firm, it is established. It says, the second part of that verse 3, it says, by understanding it is established. So everything connected to it, you know, wisdom, understanding, knowledge, um, you know, I'm just using it interchangeably, but this is how it is. Um, through wisdom, something comes into existence, which is not there earlier, 
here in this case it's a it's a house a house is built by understanding it is established it is made firm it is made strong and by knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches so it talks talks about you know god bringing into existence you know we know that wisdom comes from him you know um, the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom uh, and uh, knowledge of the most holy one is understanding and so on so we know it comes from it. and we also see that uh, uh, the holy spirit is called the spirit of revelation and wisdom right so he's the source he brings wisdom uh, and so um, wisdom comes from him so this wisdom enables us to bring something it, it this is what the end result of it is it brings something which is not there you know provides something which is not there makes firm what has been provided and and there is increase you know that the knowledge the rooms are filled there is increase uh, as well because of this okay so um so we see that if there is a lack of wisdom if we are you know intentionally not seeking wisdom then there is there is no the the, the possibility of this happening is not there right let's look at verse 5 a, a wise man is strong a man of knowledge increases strength for by wise counsel you will wage your own war in a multitude of counselors there is safety so everywhere you know, it talks about wisdom a person who is wise a man who is wise um a man of knowledge you know bringing in increase of strength um again the wisdom and by wise advice or wise counsel um you know the war is waged and uh, in the multitude of counselors or people with uh, wise counsel then it is a place of safety it's a place of refuge right so we we see the importance of wisdom and uh, we see that if it, there is a lack in wisdom um then then the the the, the possibility of this not happening right um you know it's uh, it's interesting james chapter 1 and verse 5 we have you know we have very uh, interesting and encouraging if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of god who gives to all liberally and without a reproach and it will be given to him okay let him ask uh, if any of if there is a lack of wisdom we can ask god and he gives to all liberally and wisdom in, enables us to live in this manner wisdom brings these things into our lives okay so lack of wisdom affects uh, or is a hindrance for um, finances god appointed finances right okay then the other thing is lastly um, the hindrance that we're going to look at is also effort or insufficient effort which means that um, you know god provides for us in many ways right uh, one of the ways by which he provides is when we ask him for provision god is a god who provides yes we ask him in faith and and god might provide through us the stream through which he provides is uh, maybe our employment the work that we do the business that he has given right um, and and whatever you know uh, work that he has appointed for us it could be the work of ministry as well right so um so we are working with our hands uh, we are maybe doing business maybe we are employed now god is providing for us through that it, it is like a vehicle through which god brings increase into our lives god brings provision into our lives we've been praying to god we've been asking lord you're the provider provide for me and here's god giving this you know employment giving this um you know this means by which he can uh, uh setting it up so that he can bring in that provision into our lives okay now what happens when i do not put in effort see because this work requires effort for me to do well to be successful this um you know business or whatever is is given to me requires that i work in a certain way requires that i put an effort right so when that effort is not put in then it becomes again a hindrance okay let's look at proverbs 10 and verse 4 he who has a slack hand becomes poor but the hand of the diligent makes rich 
and that word diligent there means um, you know being uh, decisive uh, putting in effort and uh, it also means um, uh, let me just uh, pull that word out okay it it, it also means uh, you know incisive determined eager and so on right and that word rich it means um, it bring it it means to grow it means to accumulate something right so what brings in that growth and accumulation right uh, it's a hand of the diligent which means that when there is determination when there's eagerness when there's you know, when there's hard work when there's effort that's put in then it brings in the growth and accumulation which is you know which is which we know happens right so scripture just reiterating that uh, but the opposite of that happens you know he who has a slack hand one who is slack one who is uh, the opposite of uh, being diligent then uh, it it becomes uh, it affects us right which means uh, slack would also mean being lazy it also means uh, being false uh, being idle right so if that is the quality of work if that is a quality of effort then um then there is no quest there's no chance of growth and there's no chance of accumulation right proverbs 10 and verse 4 ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10 whatever your hand finds to do do it with your might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going whatever your hand finds to do it with all your might and uh, again we are you know reminded in colossians 3 um Colossians 3 and verse 17 okay what is the what should be the mindset what should be the kind of effort um, um, verse 17 says whatever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus <clears throat> giving thanks to I'm sorry giving thanks to God the Father through him right so whatever you do do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him if we go down to verse 23 and whatever you do do it heartily as to the lord and not to men so whatever you're doing do it heartily as to the lord so first verse 17 says do all in the name of the lord jesus which means that by the authority that is that you that he's given you uh, as someone who is doing things in his place right with that perspective whatever you do you do it as someone who's representing God, as someone is standing in the place of Christ, you know, do do that. Verse 23, and whatever you do, do it heartily. I do it wholeheartedly as to the Lord and not to men. Now that's the instruction, as to the Lord. Now the verse before that talks about bond servants and it says, you know, obey your master in all things according to the flesh, not with who are masters according to the flesh you know in the natural who are your masters whom you're employed with um not with eye service as men pleasers meaning you know don't do things because they are looking at you don't do things because there's an audience around you um, don't do it because your boss is watching you right but even if there's no one around do it it says in sincerity of heart fearing god because when you're doing stuff just because people are watching then you're becoming a man pleaser you're just you're a people pleasing person right but irrespective of who's watching or who's not watching when you do it as unto god who's always watching um, that is what is required so whatever you do whatever you do do it heartily as unto god and not to men so if that is our <clears throat> quality of output of work um diligence doing it wholeheartedly doing it as unto god then it's a it's a diligent work right so the opposite of that would result in being a hindrance but if we if we would actually do this then we will overcome that hindrance right so we we so we read about so we've seen all these hindrances which are there and um, and we'll do well to overcome so next 
session next class we will look at uh, you know some of the principles for divine prosperity like so here we looked at hindrances what are those things which are you know stopping me and uh, the next session is about what are those things that i can intentionally walk into right what i what are the things that i can step into intentionally here are these principles so i step into it i walk into it and i do it so that whatever god has for my life flows into my life so this, those are the, some princip principles right so in closing let's look into our own lives and uh, let's spend some time just look into our, looking into our own lives in, maybe introspect a bit and ask the holy spirit to give us light to give us illumination into some of these things some of these things that we need to change right maybe some of us are you know we've been praying for breakthrough in the area of finances and uh, we've been waiting for breakthrough in the area of finances and maybe uh, we are negligent of some of these things right we have been ignorant of some of these things but uh, um, and and so you know as we have heard the word of god we will um, let's actively you know um, tell the lord lord you know it if it's a question of motivation tell the lord lord i know you know this has to change so i will change right my motive has been wrong so i will change right so let's let's pray and um, even as we pray i'll just um, you know maybe um, go through some of these things to just help us uh, pray it out to help us bring it before god and uh, lay it open before god so that the holy spirit can you know can can step in and bring about that change right so so let's pray let's pray you you pray uh, in your language in your own words to god and say lord um, you know uh, i don't want to be a hindrance or i don't want to entertain any hindrances i don't want to actively entertain any hindrances um knowing what your heart is or knowing who you are my heavenly father knowing that you are a provider knowing god that you know you're the one who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants and knowing that you're the one who richly gives us all things to enjoy lord uh, i i knowing that i don't want to you know put any hindrance from my life uh, from my side oh god and so you know maybe you know uh, if you've prayed that you could just continue to pray uh, for the motives of the heart to be pure, pure right what is it that's motivating you maybe because of you know maybe because of the way we lived our life our bringing maybe there was lack in our life and we hold on to money a little tighter than we we ought to you know or uh, yeah, maybe there was distrust and so on and so we you know there is uh, we want a lot more or maybe there is fear and we're saying oh what if i lose it so i better hold on to this tightly so instead of us having a like a, a light grip on these things you know money has got a strong grip on us so so let's just pray and let's ask the lord to remove all those fears remove all those insecurities and say lord purify my heart let my motives be clear let the motives of my heart why i want this let it be clear uh, yes lord i pray that uh, that you will just release us from all wrong motivations and wrong attitudes um may we be free to receive from you may we be free to um lord as instruments of righteousness may we be free to serve and be a blessing lord yes father god thank you um you know uh next we we'll just pray for methods you know some of the methods that we've been using you know are these the methods of righteousness maybe in your business maybe at work you know are you ethical are you have you been just um or has the method come in sharp contrast to the word of god sharp sharp contrast to god's heart god's um god's nature right so let's pray and ask the lord if there's anything that god is showing us that you know we will just discard those methods and say lord i i i want to take on lord the ways of righteousness god you lead me in ways of righteousness um it might seem opposite to the way the world works it might seem um not very comfortable contrary to popular culture but lord i want to follow you i want to follow you in paths of righteousness for you are righteous you are holy let my methods let my ways be 
pure and holy, Lord, before you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Uh, maybe the you know this uh, disobedience. Maybe the Lord wants us to be you know obedient, uh, have an obedient heart. He wants us to obey. You know, just ask the Lord. Uh, tell the Lord, yes, Lord, I repent of earlier disobedience. Yes, you asked me to do this. I did not. So I come in repentance with a repentant heart, being renewed now in strength, being renewed with the fervor to obey you, to be faithful in the small things. Right. So let's make a decision to obey him in the small things when it comes to money. Obey him in the small things, being faithful in the small things. You know, not holding on to things that are others, that belong to others. But you know, in the if it belongs to someone else, then you know, let's give it away. Right? Let's not hold on to it unjustly. Um. So, yeah, obedience and finances, <clears throat> and let's ask God for. <clears throat> Um, to alert us, to to give us the discernment when it comes to the works of the enemy. Whatever the enemy is maybe you know, trying to do, let's not be passive. Let's not be passive and oh, let's not wrongly attribute that to God and say, oh, God is taking away these things from me. No, God wants to bring it into our lives. Yes, God will prune it, prune certain areas of our lives so that we will become even more fruitful right um, but god's intention is not to steal kill and destroy it's it's the enemy's intention so let's not wrongly attribute that to god or you know let's not um, uh, be passive and uh, not resist the work of the enemy now, god has anointed us god has given us the authority to stand up to rise up and resist the work of the enemy so the scripture is very clear resist the devil Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So let's submit ourselves to God and resist the enemy. And uh, if there's wisdom, let's ask of God. Let's ask God wisdom in all areas of our lives <clears throat> with regard to finances. Let's ask God for wisdom <clears throat> so that it can be brought into our lives. Let's ask God for wisdom so that there can be conservation of it. It can be established in our lives. Let's ask God for wisdom so that they can be increased. The rooms will be filled with treasures and all pleasant things. So uh, let's ask God for increase. Uh, I just ask God for wisdom. Right? And if you lack wisdom, <clears throat> he is faithful. And um, he gives without ridicule. He gives without reproach. So uh, let's ask God for wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And also, if there's um, effort that is lacking from our side, let's ask for diligence. Uh, let's repent and come back to him and say, God, I, I will give my best. You know, I've been slacking in this area. I've been working only when people have been watching or my boss has been watching. And I've been slacking in this area, but I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to do it as unto you uh, and not unto man, God. It doesn't, it doesn't depend on man's response. It doesn't depend on man's approval. It doesn't depend on man's um, uh, you know, reactions to the work or uh, you know, nothing of that sort. We will, if it's our responsibility that we will do it as unto God with diligence. And uh, scripture is very clear that the hand of the diligent makes rich. So we remove that hindrance. Uh, out of our lives, that hindrance of slackness, the hindrance of slothfulness, um, we remove it out of our lives. Father, we thank you that you give us an opportunity to look into our lives, Lord, and I pray, God, that you are the God who, uh, who loves us, who cares for us, and uh, who wants the best for us, Lord. And uh, Father, we thank you with regard to, Lord, prosperity, Lord, you want to bring in that so that we can be a blessing, Lord. Yes, Father God, we don't want money to be an idol in our hearts god but lord let our hearts be gripped by you god and i just pray oh god that um, you would pour out your wisdom upon us you would pour out your spirit upon us oh god that um, that in all these areas god that there will be alignment to your word that all these hindrances and barriers will be removed even as we step in um, intentionally 
by faith, God, and do what needs to be done. Yes, Lord, all that aligning, all those small choices, small decisions, and the big ones, Lord, I pray that you lead us to do, into doing them. And, and so that we'll be, Lord, experience the freedom, the breakthrough that we've been praying for. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's the, we've come to the end of the session. So um, next, next session, next class, we will look at um, the principles of divine prosperity. What are those principles? that God has laid down very clearly in his word and uh, which when we when we carry it out and uh, when we are also aware of the presence of God, like the principle and the presence, right, both go hand in hand. Um, so we will experience what God wants done, uh, experience what God has for us in our lives, right? So we'll stop here. God bless. Have a great um, week ahead. We'll meet again um, next week. God bless. Bye-bye.